Hello, I am Roaring Bug, and welcome to part two of the Blair Stokes house. So as promised, this video is furnishing the interior of the house. And jumping right in, I am working on filling up more of the exterior um, landscaping. So I'm just putting in a little bit more plants and some flower bed boxes. And now I'm working on this study. So this study is, well, this house is a traditional style. And when I was doing part one of the video for the exterior, I was saying that the style was, wasn't really Victorian so much. And I was, the word that I was looking for totally blanked out on me, but I remembered it now. And the style I wanted to say this house was, was Art Nouveau. So this house is, I don't know. It's like Art Nouveau is like, um, it's an art movement style where, um, they were really big into like organic shapes. So they were into like a lot of curves and curly cues and is really known for like, like paintings of like women and a bunch of flowers and like interesting like fontage on like words and verbiage. And it's like, kind of nature -y. Think like fairies. And this house has that Art Nouveau style into it, in it, which is very much what the realm of magic is. And if, I don't know, like, I, I guess it fits the time period of this house because this house is based on a real house that was built in, um, 1888. So I, I think it fits that time period pretty well. So I put stuff basically all around. I don't really finish one room because the uh, build by catalog is, doesn't really have any rhyme or reason. You will see me put items basically in every room as I find objects in the catalog. And uh, right now I am furnishing this living room. So this is the formal sitting room. And I kept it very brown, very classic, very much a kind of, I was going for like an imperialistic vibe. And I think I've captured that vibe and used a lot of the, I used like those seats from the vampire kit, cat uh, pack, sorry. And now I'm working on this little bump out and I really liked how it came together. So it's kind of a really weird shape. And as you can see here, I'm just putting down these fences so I can create a platform just so I can create some structure for those couches that fit in like a trifold window. So it normally fits like in a threefold window, but it didn't really fit in the space so well. So that's why I created those platforms and I put these spandrels and I put these pillars. So it looks like a, it looks like a little, like a little nook. I wouldn't say like a breakfast nook. It's more like a little like informal, like seating area. And I think it looks really sweet and very charming. It looks like a nice little place to canoodle. And I use this vampire rug and uh, it I guess it's really good for like a runner but I was like I need a rug to fit this space and I just put it there and I put one in the hall so in this foyer I put uh, this rug that you can layer it comes in different swatches so I was like yeah that works so two rooms down now I'm working on the kitchen so I was like, okay, we, we've got a traditional vibe. We, we know the style of this house. So I went with this, all like the rustic looking hardware and um, the, what is it? The, the farming uh, cottage living pack kitchen items. 
and those are base game cabinets. And I like that little like frame work with the cabinets. It doesn't stay that way. And uh, those tiles are from Realm of Magic and those are base game floor tiles. Which is weird because I don't think it matches with any kind of wall tiling. I don't know why The Sims does that. Anyway, uh, anywho, I've extended the kitchen. Um, that tea maker doesn't stay there, but whatever. Okay, so now I'm putting a dining table here. Uh, I guess normally in a traditional house, they would separate the dining from the kitchen, but I'd figure, like, it has a bit of a modern flair to this house. They would have their dining in their kitchen area. So I am just, like I said, I'm just putting random stuff there. Like, I found that skeleton from Get to Work from the doctor career, and I was like, yeah, you're going in the study. And the vampire open book. And this globe. I know there's a globe that's like a bar. Um, I don't know what pack it is, but I don't own it. That's just a decorative globe. I think that's an unlock item in like the writing career. And I put the pots and pans hanging from the ceiling and I put some like, I don't know, like pendant lights and I made this little framed like cabinetry thing off the side which seems pretty realistic i mean most older houses have like built-in furniture and i use these curtains which i don't think i've ever used in any other build because they are very traditional curtains and i left this space which i guess in a traditional house would would have been the dining room area i made this area into the skill building room and I put a rug down in that uh, little little nook, that canoodle nook. And off to the side here is a bathroom. And I used the Realm of Magic toilet, which is kind of fancy, and a vampire uh, tub and shower combo. And I put these uh, curtains here for the large window here and I'm using the nine key to raise it into place and I'm putting uh, a little light there which I think looks the most I don't know historically accurate looking light I could put there and uh, I stick a rug in the skill building room and then I just filled it up with a bunch of skill building items so yeah we got like a like that hedge that gives you like gardening skills, a punching bag. I know the punching bag may seem out of place, but I do know historically that Victorian women were into boxing. There's like vintage pictures of like Victorian women boxing, which looks amazing. So if you don't know what that's all about, I, w I recommend like searching for it because those vintage pictures of Victorian women boxing is that looks really cool and I put this uh, built-in closet uh, that closet is from get together and I use a realm of magic um, for poster bed for post bed and I use these uh, nightstands from cats and dogs and the lamps are from cats and dogs too and decor oh, to the max wallpaper because I I think it fits this theme that um, Art Nouveau theme of organicism and I I was gonna put like a fancier rug but it's a little too busy in here so I just kept it plain and that's a base game rug and uh, normally I would put those little saucer lights on all corners of my rooms because I like my rooms bright in my gameplay but I didn't go too crazy with the lighting. I just try and kept it to these traditional lights. And there's a lot of windows in that bathroom, but I could not think of a better place to put a bathroom. So that is where it's gonna be. So furnishing this bedroom is just gonna be very girly girl, just putting a vanity and some flowers on it and, uh, 
like I said, I jump around. I jump around because the catalog is just a mess. And now I'm just moving on to just putting curtains everywhere. And I skipped ahead because, you know, you don't need to see that. And I put down a bed, another uh, bed with posters on it, with posts on it. And I'm thinking like this house is good for like a multi-generational home. So I, in my imaginings, that uh, that double bed in the smaller front room, this one here that I'm trying to select a rug for, this would probably be for a grandparent, for grandparents. And then, you know, for like two kids and two toddlers. And uh, of course the primary bedroom is in the back that has the ensuite. So I kept this room very green, very traditional looking. Uh, that bed doesn't stay there, but you know, I found that out when I put these uh, nightstands there and I was like, huh, it doesn't quite work. Also, there are not too many um, round nightstands. That's just ones that happen to be in the realm of magic. But I ended up using these base game ones because I, I thought that fit the feel of the decor a lot better in this house. And I just used the same uh, seasons dresser for all of these bedrooms and um, just putting down clutter which I don't normally do but I felt like it made the house feel a little bit more complete and lived in if it had a couple of items in there. Uh, I especially like putting those two book bags at the f foot of the bed and that um, I don't know like pen holder in the study and I had such a hard time trying to figure out how to put stuff in this toddler room because toddler room gameplay items are so big like that that dollhouse is enormous and ugh, I don't know like you could also have like the play tent and that's also huge as well and then like they need all these skill building items and they need potties and I was like oh my goodness I'm running out of space I, I did not do high chairs. I don't normally play with high chairs. I, I find them a little too difficult. And now I'm moving on to the kids room and I just put these two skill building items. The, um, the, I don't know, like experiment table and the like drawing table. And now I'm just putting some artwork on the walls here. Um, they are not that remarkable, but you know, it's just something to put on the walls so it's not so bare in here. And I just go around to each room just selecting some paintings. Like, I, I feel like dinosaurs is appropriate in a kid's room. So I was trying to think of like, oh, what, what are appropriate items for each room? So I was trying to think like, hey, what would be in a kid's room? And I was like, yeah, that would be in a kid's room. And for the grandparents' room, I put a uh, like a sofa chair and a plant and like the knitting kit because I figure, hey, they could they could do cross stitching while they're in that room. And I wanted to put this sunflower vase in there, but it doesn't snap to anything. It's actually something that just fits on the ground. So I try to alt place it into place, but it was kind of jumping up because. Um, that roof piece behind that wall has a platform. And I was like, huh, I can't really get that quite right. And I put um, Guy Dree's picture on, in the hall here instead of in the study. And because I, I put the butterfly mounted thing from the Realm of Magic. Oh, and I changed the floor uh, on the outside of the house to a more stone look because, I don't know, I just didn't feel like the stone I picked the first time was a good match. And uh, in the backyard, I decided to put a row of rose bushes. It's a, it's a pretty English thing to see like a row of rose bushes, and I don't think I've ever done that before. Though in real life, um, Actually, I'm very fond of pink roses because my dad used to grow pink roses in our backyard. So they happen to be my favorite type of rose. 
and uh, I just lined it with uh, these really full, like low-lying plants that are from Island Living. I like the plants in Island Living. They're very, they're very nice. They look very lush. And now I'm just putting a little bit of terrain paint. This is my light dusting of terrain paint. I don't really do too much. And now I'm just doing some outdoor decor here. So I'm putting down uh, outdoor seating. I just wanted a dark table to go with the dark chairs and a barbecue. And I didn't think the barbecue should go on the wall of the house. So I put it on the on the side of the fence and I didn't know what to put in that space. So I just put a planter there. And this hose, which is just a decor item, which looks very nice. I think it's a nice realistic touch. And now I'm just putting some outdoor lighting, just these little lights here. They're base game lights. And I feel like they have that traditional touch. And now I'm just going through the time of day just so I can test out those lights. And I decided to put down a swing set and I put it at an angle. So I just want to put some terrain paint underneath it to give it some wear under there. And then I was like, why am I doing this at an angle? Now the terrain is on an angle. But yeah, this is... I, yeah, in the front I was like, oh, okay, this fence is a little high and I want the house to be more visible. So I used a lower fence just for the front. And I realized it was asymmetrical, so I had to move the fence up on the left side. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I need to fill it with plants. Because I can't have a, a bald patch of ground next to there. And you, it's very glitchy trying to put plants when you have a house on a foundation raised up. Um, I was too lazy to put the house down because then you have to redo the stairs. So I'm just trying my best to just fiddle it into place and raise those little lights on the top of that planter bed. And that is it. The interior is done. So now you're going to get into my screenshots. So if you like this build, it's on the gallery at Roaring Bug all one word. Uh, my social media stuff is in the description. Uh, please like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. And thank you for watching. Bye!